Good morning, Facebook. Hello, 8.32, November 14th. We're waiting to go live here in just a moment. All right, there it is. Good morning, everybody. Chef Marcus Giuliano here from Aroma Time Bistro in Ellenville. Your chef on a mission since 2003 here. We've been open. Um, there's my notification. Let's see if I got sound. And there it is. I sure do. Got sound. I am live. I am um, procrastinating on my morning run. Procrastinating. I don't even know the temperature right now. The sun's out there. Um, but I am procrastinating. I missed my run at 6.30 this morning with my friends. Uh, with our little running group. It's 39 degrees right now. We ran nine miles yesterday, so I'm not really doing much today. I'm just getting out for a couple of miles. Um, if you follow me on Facebook, me personally, um, I post um, my um, my days I, I've been running in a row. I've been running in a row. Today is day 1,050 days in a row. I've not missed a running ever since my mom passed away. Um, I've honored myself every day for at least one mile, no matter what the conditions are. Um, sometimes I'll cycle six or I'll hike three, but it's always outside. It's never inside. It's always outside. doesn't matter what the weather. doesn't matter if I'm flying back and forth from Italy. I've flown back and forth from um, Miami in and out. Um, ran at 4 o'clock in the morning. I ran when I got back at night at 10, uh, but I honor myself every day with at least one mile. Um, yesterday we did nine with some friends, so... I'm going to go out here in a few minutes and, uh, and run after this Facebook Live. I am um, procrastinating, though. But uh, I want to talk about salmon today. So if you're tuning in live, drop a comment, hashtag live. We always go live here on Facebook. The replays are always on YouTube. So if you're following our YouTube channel, we're approaching 100,000 subscribers. So thank you, everybody, who supports me on YouTube. I'm at 98,500 subscribers. Um so uh, within a couple of months, I should be at 100,000. So thank you if you support me on YouTube. If you don't support me on YouTube, head over there, Aroma Time, Marcus Giuliano. Head over there, subscribe. Then, you'll, then you can catch up on all the videos. Everything's categorized. All of Jamie's cocktail hours, her talk cocktail time, um, all of my videos, all of our travel videos to, to Italy, to Spain, to, to uh, Mexico, uh, wineries in New York. Everything's categorized on playlists. You can really see everything broken down over there. A lot more health items over there. There's a lot on salmon over there. A lot on salmon. I have a baking soda section. Baking soda, I feel, is one of the most underrated uh, things out there. Um, I use baking soda, sworn by baking soda. I've inter actually interviewed um, Tullio Simoncini, the uh, uh, Italian doctor who has used baking soda for cancer uh, for the last 40 years. I have his book on my shelf over there. Um, him and I are friends when we go um, to, uh, to Italy. We try to connect with, with Tulio. Um, so, uh, yeah, so everything on YouTube is, is categorized out. So if you're tuning in live, just drop a comment, hashtag live here. If it's on the replay on Facebook, uh, drop a comment, uh, hashtag re replay. And I always like to know where people are tuning in from. That always helps out. I love to know where people are tuning in from. Um, my YouTube audience is, is, is a very wide audience from all over the world. A lot from India, a lot from New Zealand. I don't even want to look at the, the metrics on, on my YouTube channel. Of course, a lot from the U.S. and in throughout Europe. So I'd just like to know where people are tuning in from. But I want to talk about salmon this morning. Wild salmon. Every chef knows. Every chef knows. Let's say 9 out of 10 chefs know. Restaurant owners know. Most of us know that wild salmon is far superior than farmed salmon. Farmed salmon has massive issues um, as far as uh, environmental pollution, health of the salmon, health on us, the stuff that's in the salmon, all the toxins that are in the salmon. Um, it's just, it's not a good thing. And I can go on for hours about this, but I'm not going to talk about that. Most of you know this kind of stuff, especially if you follow me. What I want to talk about right now is when is a, when can you find fresh Alaskan wild salmon? When is in season? Alaska has is the benchmark for salmon production. They are the ones who catch the most. They have no salmon farms to get in the way. All the other places have salmon farms. The salmon farms deteriorate the wild of the number of wild salmon because it spreads disease out into the bays, into the ocean, and the wild supply, wild stock of fish, uh, is a major detriment to the wild fish, and they die off because of salmon farms. And salmon farms will tell you that you're saving the wild salmon by eating farmed salmon. It's totally not true. They have decades of research on this now, and it's just not true. Um, the wild salmon population diminishes anywhere you put salmon farms. So... When is true wild salmon in season? I went to a restaurant the other day, a nice restaurant, and they swore they had wild salmon. 
um, very vague on where it was from. Like just it just said wild salmon on the menu. I asked, and I didn't want to push push the envelope because we were celebrating a birthday. But if I was by myself, um, I would have totally asked more questions and totally put them on the spot a bit more. I would have put them on the spot. I would have because it's our right to know what we're eating. And I have avoided eating farmed salmon since I think 1998 was the last time I actually consumed farmed salmon. 1998, over 20 years ago, I've been uh, very strict on that in my in the cooking at the restaurant here and in my personal life. So Jamie and I, if you know us personally, uh, we practice what we preach, everything at the restaurant, all the great organic foods and all that kind of stuff is, is comes from our personal life. We're not the restaurant owners that go to Whole Foods, shop for our family and turn around and buy you the cheapest products, which I know a lot of restaurant owners that are like that. They know the difference, but their business model is not set up to reflect their personal lifestyle. So um, ours is. Uh, Jamie and I hold true to that. That's our mission. Um, we What we do personally, um, all the health things and high quality food, the same stuff you can find here in the restaurant. I'm happy to show people ingredients. Uh, I'm happy to bring out boxes, labels to people and say, here's what's actually in the food. And it drives me crazy when restaurants say that, they, that they're that they all natural and this and that. And I know what they're using. Um, recently, a bakery posted something, how they use all natural ingredients, this and that. And I was in that bakery 10 years ago. Um, and I saw the labels, and nothing in there was natural. <laughs> and they're saying that they're using the nat same natural ingredients they've been using for many, many decades. And um, the ingredients were not natural. All kinds of funky stuff in these mixes and everything. And they're just blasting on their website how natural. I called out one big bakery in in, um, in Rockland County, Rockland Bakery. Um, they all upset me because... Um, they had all these funky stuff in their mixes, and they're saying how everything's true and natural to that they felt through to. And I had a YouTube campaign on them to call them out, and um, and I even called them and spoke to them. And said, you've got to remove that; it's very misleading on your website. So let's get back to salmon. Let's get back to salmon. So when is wild salmon in season? Wild salmon has a short season. Primarily, the summer um, is when wild salmon's in season. So when you go to a restaurant right now, and if they're serving wild salmon on their menu, it says wild salmon. Chances are they're getting it from Alaska, um, if, if it were in season. Chances are they're getting it from Alaska. Like I said, other areas, British Columbia, Washington State, this is all dying off. The salmon are all dying off there. They don't, they don't have, they don't, they have, they have wild catches, but they don't have, they don't have enough, they don't have the abundance like Alaska does. And Washington State has seen the detriment of fish farms, and they've actually started banning fish farms in Washington State in hopes to regenerate the wild, the, the thriving salmon population. So there's a few key fact. There's a few factors that, that are, are inhibiting salmon as well. And dams and stuff like that going up uh, upstream are 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 making it harder for salmon to reproduce. But the salmon farms are one of the biggest detriments to the salmon out there. And salmon is a keystone species. So uh, many many other species rely upon salmon. Uh, say the salmon survival to live. Uh, grizzly bears, trees, everything relies upon salmon. Uh, salmon is a true keystone species. We need salmon in the oceans. So, and um, Alaska has a very, very strict quota system. Um, they monitor everything that, that spawns, and then if the season opens, and, um, and uh, there is enough to go around currently. So, all right. Um, when is Alaskan salmon season? So if you go to a restaurant right now in November, November 14th, if you go to a restaurant today and it says wild salmon on their menu, I would be very, very, very wary. The first thing I would ask is, um, is your wild salmon, um, are you sourcing fresh wild salmon, non-frozen? And if they say frozen, perfect. That's their out because you can buy year-round frozen salmon from Alaska, line caught. We do it. It's an amazing product. We sell a lot of it in our grocery store and our market, a ton of it. That right there is perfect. That's their out. If they say that it's fresh, never frozen, then you got problems. Red flag up because the season is kind of over so i'm going to just pull up a graph here of the wild salmon season so in alaska king salmon from may to the beginning of august that's it king salmon from may to begin of, this is the this is primarily when it's in season are there pockets of stuff that's in season here and there there are um in fact you can probably catch Alaskan salmon year round if you're in Alaska and you go out in, in the ocean and you get ocean caught and as opposed to river caught and things like that. Sure, but there's not enough of it to go around. So if you're a chef and you want to know if there's, if there's or, or a consumer, if you want to know there's fresh wild salmon on the market, you go to Pike Place Market, go to their website and see 
what they have there. Because Pike Place is going to be the first market to get it. That's a fish market, famous fish market in Seattle. They will get the fish first. So if they have it, it means it can be, it can be gotten. Now, just because they have it doesn't mean a restaurant in New York has it. Okay? It goes there first, um, and then it could make it to New York. So um, May 2, the beginning of August is king salmon season. Silver salmon from July to September. Um, and, you know, it will go a little later, sometimes October, sometimes November for silver salmon. But that, but that I mean, that's, that's pushing it. Um, red salmon, um, June to August, that's it. Um, two months, two months. Um, pink, coho, chum, all the same. June, July, August. A little bit goes into September here and there. Um, and folks, that is right off the Alaska.org site, the Alaskan um, government site, Alaska. Oh, Alaska.org. I mean, uh, that's off Alaska.org. Um, there's a lot of lot of sites out there. The Alaskan uh, Fish Council. All these sites are out there to tell you, and all this stuff is um, will tell you the, the the seasons on salmon and all the fish. Halibut, May to September, um, is halibut. Halibut, um, great fish as well. Uh, deep sea fish. So if you go to a restaurant and they're, and they're telling you that it's fresh salmon right now and it's wild, um, I would be very, very skeptical about that. And if you're avoiding farm salmon, which I feel you should be, then I wouldn't order it. I would not trust the restaurant right now. I would not trust the restaurant from now until next June. Next June. So you have November, December, January, February, March, June. You have six, the next six months to be extremely skeptical about salmon, wild salmon in a restaurant. Extremely skeptical. Now, if they say they're frozen, fine, because you can buy frozen year-round. Now, um, the one thing that is in season right now, which chefs mislead people all year long on, is true diver scallops. True diver scallops are in season now. Uh, this is where divers go down into parts of um, day, boat, day boat. They take a day boat out. The divers jump down, and they handpick big scallops where they don't do any dredging. and They don't, they don't do mass production. They go down and handpick scallops. This is why diver scallops are two to three times the price. Most restaurants, most chefs think just because they're buying a, a U10 scallop, which means 10 to a pound. Um, they think that's a diver scallop because it's it's big. It's not a diver scallop. Diver scallops are sent down by divers to be handpicked, and those are in season right now. November it starts, and it goes into March, second weekend of March, maybe first first week, first or second week in March. That's the season when boats really don't go out and they're not they're not harvesting like they normally do. The divers go out and they handpick in the very very cold waters. So it is. Um, it, if you can find true true diver scallops but again most restaurants don't have true diver scallops most restaurants are just calling a big scallop a diver scallop but it's unfortunate and if it's july and they have a diver scallop or it's september they have a diver scallop it could have been previously frozen but probably not there's not a lot of diver scallops to go around seeing that it's um they're hand-picked scallops so that's the situation on salmon folks um you have every right to know what's in your food where it's coming from that's your right as a consumer um, that's my responsibility as a chef and owner of a restaurant is to be able to tell you truthfully what is in your food. That is my obligation and your right is to know. So make sure when you go places, if you're concerned about what you're eating, you have every right to ask. And a lot of restaurants will get upset when you start asking. They feel you're conducting an investigation. You know what? When you go buy a car, you do research on the car you're buying. When you go buy a lot of big things, when you buy mattresses, you do a lot of research on the mattress. The mattress is going to be with you 10 years, and it's going to affect your sleep. Well, guess what? Food affects your health, and you're paying for it. So you deserve to know and understand what is in your food, truth and menu. There are laws in that in a lot of states and and um, a moral obligation, ethical obligation by the restaurants to give that to you. So don't feel like you're putting a burden on them. If you have a lot of questions, call a restaurant ahead of time. Call them during the day and say, I'm coming out to eat there tonight or tomorrow night. I have a few questions. Um, I can ask, hopefully I can ask them now as opposed to when I'm there tomorrow. So it'll help me with my my, my, my ordering process. Um, so don't feel, don't feel like you're imposing at all because it is your right to know. So, all right, that's it, folks. I'm gonna go out for my run now, um, get a couple miles in. And um, then uh, that's it. We're gonna have a great day today. It's sunny out. Hopefully it'll be nice today. Um, yesterday's rain, thunder, a lot of thunder and lightning yesterday. Jamie and I were driving. We were going through the Hudson Valley, stopping at a couple of wineries, talking about our, our our car driving business. 
our driving business, our DD service, and uh, just you know showing up to winery, shaking hands, that kind of thing. And we were I was, we were driving, and we actually saw a tree fall down. Didn't fall in the street, but we're driving, and all of a sudden, I see up on my left side there, boom, tree falls right down. I'm like, whoa, I've never seen like a, a tree fall like that. Um, so um, that was uh, pretty cool. Nobody was hurt, but it was just on the side of the road there. Um, and uh, we went, uh, a lot of places were like, do you sell that lightning and thunder? And Bashakel, I guess, we were at Bashakel, and they said that like, lightning actually like struck down like right near them in the parking lot, and uh, they had lost their... They lost their Wi-Fi and they're on their cellular data service to uh, to run the the computer and everything in the kitchen. So it was cold out too. Um, so, but they had live music there yesterday. Basha Kills open until December nineteenth, I think they said, and then they'll be closed for a couple of months and reopening in the spring. So, if you're going to any wineries in the Hudson Valley, make sure you call them. We went to a winery yesterday that said it was open on Facebook, said it was open on google and their website and we got there an hour after their opening time and nobody was there and it said closed um so it's unfortunate when that happens here and there and mistakes can happen some places it's not a mistake and it happens over and over again they're just not conscious um so call ahead make sure and if you want more information on our designated driver service go to best hudson valley winery tours.com or vip winery vacations.com and you'll click the link vip winery vacations.com click the link for hudson valley and it'll take you to that page and it'll uh, tell you all about 42 bucks an hour we send the driver to you and we're fully insured our insurance of course licensed drivers background checked everything responsible drivers that uh, will then go to and drive your car to any destination you want in the Hudson Valley. It's $42 an hour plus tip, and it's better than having an Uber driver because they're constantly waiting for you there at your beckoning call. Ubers are unreliable, as we know, here in the Hudson Valley, very unreliable. A lot of people from New York City, when they're coming up, they call us for this service, like, ah, we're just going to Uber it. And wineries hate that because w every winery owner will tell you in the Hudson Valley, every tasting room manager will tell you in the Hudson Valley, when guests come in and they Uber in, and it's late and it's around closing time, these wineries were like, well, you know, I got to stay here an extra hour because these, the, their Uber's not here. And some people are like, well, I just, I, it's summertime, it's warm out. They can stay outside. They can sit outside and we're closing up or locking up. Every winery has stories about how Ubers just aren't available here in the Hudson Valley. So our driving service will eliminate that problem and will also eliminate a DWI, which is the most expensive, um, costly, and, um, and of course, safety. So check that out, VIPWineryVacations.com. Click the Hudson Valley link, and uh, you can see all about our designated driver service here in the Hudson Valley. On, also on there is tours to Mexico, tours to Italy, and the Finger Lakes. So our next upcoming group tour is uh, Mexico in April, Valle de Guadalupe. Amazing wineries down there, the best food and wine scene of all of Mexico. Uh, it is a true culinary delight. It's Napa Valley. Uh, that is in Mexico, and it is amazing. And I can't wait to go back in three weeks, and we're going back in April as a group. That's it, folks. Everybody have a great day, and we'll talk to you later.